What's up, YouTube? So before we get started with this video, on first take, they're gonna be talking about how the Cleveland Browns just got beat up by the Tennessee Titans, and they're gonna be discussing, are the Cleveland Browns, have they been hyped up, too hyped up? So are they overhyped? So see what they have to say about that. I couldn't wait for this subject. You know, it's very interesting, Max Kelvin. You know, I was thinking about you, you know. And by the way, Max, I don't know if you know this or not, but, um, you know, because I usually don't bother. You know, I don't bother y'all. I leave y'all alone. Yeah. I called you yesterday. You did not answer your phone. Now, I don't know I what's going on. Ask you. Ryan Clark because, I, damn it, I called him right after I called you. No check call from Stephen A. Smith. I, I understand. I'll check I, you right I, now. I'm just telling you, I don't know any variety. You know, I don't want to say that. You know, I don't want to yeah, get yeah, in yeah, trouble yeah. with a yeah. carrier. But I'm uh, just letting you know. I dialed a couple of numbers yesterday. Mm. One of them was yours. In the immediate <laughs> aftermath of this beatdown that took place. Let all right, so here's a little uh, the stats on the Cleveland Browns from yesterday. So Baker Mayfield went 25 for 38 for 285 yards with one touchdown and three interceptions, and he was sacked five times. So Odell Beckham Jr. had seven receptions for 71 yards. Uh, Jarvis Landry had four receptions for 67 yards. And Nick Chubbs had 17 runs for uh, 75 yards. So that's a little heads up right there. So let's, see, let's continue. Let me state for the record. Cleveland's a very, very talented team. I have no questions about their individual talent. Mm -hmm. What did I say? I said, second-year quarterback, first-year head coach. Who the hell do y'all think y'all are? You ain't been in a postseason since 2002. Breath smelling like Similac, wet behind the ears. Bunch of young puppies ain't really get smashed yet. I said, it's a man's game. What's going to happen when somebody come up and put some wood on you when it counts? And sure enough, I didn't even expect that. Yeah, I didn't. I expected a loss. I didn't expect 43 to 13. I didn't expect three interceptions. I certainly, Mr. Jarvis Landry, who I have profound respect for, I certainly did not expect him to be in the media after the game looking at the report. Don't ask me that question. That was a very legitimate question by that reporter, Jarvis Landry. The reporter asked, Damien, in case you didn't see it, did you, do you believe that the lack of action in the preseason, I'm paraphrasing, right. the lack of action affected y'all. In other words, there was a lot of cats that wasn't playing during the preseason. That's a legit and question. That's a legit question. That's a good excuse it's, for him, actually. I'm just saying, it's a legit question. <laughs> It was a good question, but uh, Jarvis Landry, he was kind of heated. He was very kind of heated. Like, like maybe the reporters had something to do with them getting beat up by the Tennessee Titans. But let's continue. How you going to snap at the reporter like the reporter did something wrong? Because you got stung? Yeah, I expect the better from you, Jarvis Landry. I expect the better. Here's the bottom line. I try to tell y'all. All I said about, listen, Cleveland probably going to recover. They're playing the Jets next week. I mean, just put the kick out on the field. You'll win the damn game for crying out loud. But what I'm saying to you is this. You might recover from this, but what happened yesterday was the Tennessee Titans, who, by the way, was scooping stuff up in the end zone. You understand what I'm saying? Just messing with them. Because why? They heard all the chirping. They heard all the talking, stealing all the headlines, making all the headlines. All this uh, ain't play a damn game yet. Who gives a damn about a bunch of pretty boys coming together on a national football league? It's basketball that's different. It's tennis that's different. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the NFL. And no matter how talented you are, as my, as, as my Mike Tyson would say, everybody look good till they get hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That all I'm saying is, last point is, all I'm saying is this. I've been telling y'all for the last several months, especially Don't look at you, me. I especially you, I said, yo, you got to play. And when they get on those fields, those grown-ass men, and all of this chirping is going to come back. And they didn't even get to Pittsburgh anything. It's Tennessee that did it. Okay, so... Uh, so the Cleveland Browns they did get beat up. They did get beat up by the Tennessee Titans, but they're not overhyped. They're not overhyped at all because they do have a squad and they're stacked at many positions. So they're not overhyped. They're not overhyped at all. It is all true that they are stacked. Um, the only thing is, is they have to apply it. They have to apply their talent. They have to apply their talent. That's the only thing. Like I said, I've been saying this for the past couple months. Look, Cleveland Browns, they're stacked, they're a position. There's no reason why they shouldn't be a great team. They have four primetime games, so everybody could, will be able to see them and they, they'll be able to show off. You know, they have all these good things going for the Cleveland Browns for the first time in a really long time. You know, they're stacked, they're ready to play. Everybody's excited. They're a young team. 
Um, but the only thing is now, all they have to do now is apply it. They have to apply it, go out there and win. You have to go out there and win. Nobody, no teams are just going to, you know, you're not, they're not just going to come into your stadium or you're not going to go to their stadium and they're just going to lay down and let you steamroll them. You still have to play. You guys may be highly talented. You guys may be ballers, but you still have to apply it. You still have to go out there and win and play against other teams. Other teams aren't just going to stand there. You have to apply your talent. And I bet you a couple of guys were thinking, well, we're so stacked that we're just going to go out there and just beat up everybody. We're just going to go out there and beat up the Tennessee Titans. That's not it. That's not it at all. Just because you're stacked, no one's going to be scared of you. If anything, you have a target on your back. What you have to do, you have to apply your talent. And I'm kind of glad that they lost now and realized nobody's just going to sit there and let you steamroll over them. You're not just going to beat up everybody. They lost now, and they realize this is a re- this is the real deal. We have to apply and uh, and use our talent and play together as a team, a well a well-oiled machine, and go out there and beat up other people, or it's just not going to work. So let's continue. Okay. I want to leave Damien some time too. Go ahead. First of all, they were a hot mess. They were, no question they were a hot right, mess. Man. Baker looked terrible. But we know Baker can ball because we saw it last year, especially second half of the season. He was elite, and we saw him in college. So it's not Baker's not going to be a long-term problem in terms of his ability to play the position. He's got it. Mm-hmm. The team was totally undisciplined. Mm-hmm. The defense, which was supposed to be top 10, mm-hmm. looked anything but. And there are legitimate questions about Kitchens as a head coach. But let's not forget, he was the offensive coordinator last year. So the offense, I believe, will come together. The question is now, do I change my outlook for this team, for the Browns? I thought they would go to the playoffs. I thought that would have been a wash. In order to say they had a successful season, they had to win a playoff game. If they missed the playoffs, unsuccessful season. I figured they'd win 10 games. I'm actually not going to change my projection. I thought they'd win at home against Tennessee. They got stopped by Tennessee at home. But you know what? I thought there was a chance they would start off slowly. New coach, new pieces, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And yes, they they lost a game they should have won. So maybe I should say nine wins. No, because they're going to win a game they should lose. That always happens. That's the one they were supposed to win that they lost. If they have another one that they're supposed to win, I'll drop them to nine games. So I kind of agree with Max. I'm not going to give up on the Cleveland Browns yet. Like I said, they're a young team. They're they're stacked. They're, they still need time to gel with each other and get each other's timing down. I'm not going to give up, give up on them yet just because that one bad loss, even though it's the first game. Um, so like I said, they just need to get that first win to get their confidence, get the momentum going, and I think they'll be okay. Uh, I've if they make the playoffs or just get short of making the playoffs, I think that'll still be considered a good year, especially if they win 10 games. So, like I said, they're still a young team. They still need to learn how to play with each other and, and everything that goes along with that. So I'm not willing to give up on the Cleveland Browns just yet. Like I said, I want to see how they react to getting their first win. That should get the ball rolling. And this loss right here should show them and let them know early that just because we're a stacked team doesn't mean you're just going to automatically go out there and win. You still have to apply your talent. We still have to work together as a well-oiled machine in order to go out there and beat up on people. Then everybody will start to see that we're a team and we can start the ball rolling and to, you know, being a, a good quality Super Bowl caliber type team. But other than that, you have to apply your talent. Nobody's just going to let let you go in there and steamroll them. You have to apply your talent. Like I said, I'm not willing to give up on the Cleveland Browns just yet, especially over one game. And as far as the 18 penalties, that a lot of that has to go towards to the coaching and, you know, discipline, discipline those guys and take care of that. Because if they cut those penalties in half, that could have changed the game drastically. So there's a few things in there that indicate that they're still young team, little immature coaches need to, you know, get out some of the kinks and, you know, get a little bit more discipline. But at this point, like I said, I'm not willing to give up on the Cleveland Browns. Those guys are too stacked and they're not overhyped. They just have to apply their talent. So let's continue. Oh, no, first of all, hold on, first of all, done. hold on, first of all, who said they should have won? I'm not me. Who said they should have won? In my projection for 10 wins, oh, I had a win. Go okay, ahead, man. Now, go ahead. Now, is my outlook for the playoffs different, even with the same 10 wins? The answer is yes. But that doesn't just have to do with the Browns. Mm. That's to do with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Your Steelers, by the way, the same boat as the Browns right now. Same boat. They, oh, they lost to New England. They, they still Y'all lost to Tennessee. Stop They're 0-1 just Stop like it. the Browns. And Andy 
Dalton look really good. I got to give it to him. I was shocked. But the Ravens are the real reason for concern in that division right I now. Agree. Not the Browns' I week agree. one performance. I agree. Go ahead. Listen, I said on this show with all of you guys here, okay, all of you guys here talking about, especially you, Max, boasting up and, and just putting the Cleveland Browns on, on this high pedestal. When you talk all, when you've been talking all this noise and you've been getting all this, all this media attention that the Browns have gotten in the offseason, guess what? Everyone around the National Football League hears that. You're now going from a hunter to now being the hunted. Yesterday was proof of that. You heard Delaney Walker, what he was talking about. They are who they thought we, they were. And they're going to get that for the next 15 weeks. Regardless, listen, I played in two Super Bowls. And I can tell you right now, the year after Super Bowl was the hardest year Ever. You know why? Because you're playing, you're getting everybody's got a target A game. On your back. You're getting everybody's A game week in and week out. This is not going to stop just with well, the Tennessee Titans. This is. So I, I definitely agree with Damon Woody there that they're definitely going to see, receive the A game for all the teams that they play. But again, they weren't overhyped. All the hype that they got is well warranted because they're, they are a stacked team and they should be doing very well. They should be. Sure, they lost the first game, but that doesn't mean that they were overhyped because they, they are a stacked team. They have a lot of great players that can really make a difference. The only thing is now, the last thing to do is apply it. They have to work together as a team, as a well-oiled machine to take care of business. So as far as them overhyped, overhyped they haven't been overhyped. And now they know that just because you're a stacked team and you should be good and you're good on paper doesn't mean that you're just going to go beat up everybody. You have to apply on the field and you better be ready for every single weekend because those guys are going to be some headhunters and to show that you guys are the team that you should be uh, and the team that you are on paper. So I don't know. I, I'm not willing to give up on the Cleveland Browns. They haven't, they're not overhyped. They just need to apply it. So let's continue. What happened every want, week with any opponent that comes up? I want to challenge you on that. What go you ahead. Just said. Go ahead. Where you, I believe, you're doing yourself and your Super Bowl champions a disservice. It's not just that they're a target and they got a bullseye on their back. They wanted you because y'all were the champions. Y'all were great, and you go after the you. You hunt the champions. Right. Yeah. Right. In Cleveland's yeah. case, you got a whole bunch of cats in the league that very firmly believe. That's not deserved. Y'all don't deserve this hype y'all getting. Who the hell are y'all? Well, let's let's be real here, uh, Stephen and Smith. Let's be real. Everybody that plays in the NFL, anybody that watches football knows that the Cleveland Browns are stacked, okay? They have a good team. And they know, everybody knows that it is warranted for the Cleveland Browns to see that type of hype. Now, should, should they be saying they're all going to go to the Super Bowl? No. Should they be saying that the all Mac is going to go to the playoffs and just smash everybody and they're going to go undefeated? No, they shouldn't be saying that. But they are a stacked team. They do have a lot of great players. So as far as that, they're not overhyped. Like I said, as far as I'm going to the Super Bowl on Mac and all that, you know, you can leave that out. But they're not, they haven't been overhyped at all. And they do, they do deserve a certain amount of hype for what they have, which is a very stacked team, which is the same thing with the Dallas Cowboys. But they won. So let's continue. Think 